Hi everybody. Well, this came in the mail and uh, this is the LTC 1966 RMS to DC converter. Those of you who have been following this project know that uh, I made a boo-boo in the design of this um, power logger and I had assumed for some reason that the, um, the current and the voltage signal would be a sine wave and from there it make it easy to work out the RMS signal. However, uh, in one of my previous videos, I actually measured it, scoped the thing, and turns out that it was not a sine wave, and hence we have this problem that we need to solve. Basically, we need to find a way of uh, uh, getting this uh, turned into an RMS so that we can get accurate readings. So here we have the LTC um, 1966. It's supposed to be the device that can do it for us. We are going to find out uh, what this does. Now, there's only one problem, really. And that is this thing comes in an MSOP package. That's really small. I mean, SOP is small, but MSOP is really small. So what we're going to need is we're going to need one of these uh, breakout boards. So I'm going to have to solder the thing. Actually, I need two of this, but I only ordered one. Um, so we'll probably have to breadboard this and see if it works. If it works, I'll get one more of these and find a way of putting that onto this board or maybe strip everything off and uh, redo another board. We'll see how that goes. But well, we're going to have to put this on this board and we'll see if this works. All right, so we've got the chip out. Man, this is small. I don't know how well this will look on video, but just look at that. That is tiny, right? That's less than the 0.1 inch pitch. All right, I can barely hold this thing down because it's jumping all over the place and look at that that's how tiny this thing i'll get it back a little bit that that's about it that's how tiny this thing is so i'm going to put it right down here and uh we're going to have to solder this on i'm going to have to okay this is going to take a little while and i'm not sure if you want to see me I'll do some boring soldering but we'll come back to this after uh, i've soldered this down all right that's done and it's on the board now. So we're going to uh, hook this thing up, wire it up, and then we'll maybe feed it some sort of um, AC signal and see how this performs. So hang on there. Okay, so before we wire this thing up, we probably want to take a look at the uh, data sheet from Linatech. So this device here, let's see, we've got something nice going here. Okay, that's um, all the usual stuff. You can download this for yourself if you want to know a little bit more about it. I'm looking for the uh, uh, application configuration. Let's, oh man, that's a long, come on. All the calculations, all the theory. I just want to get to the application. Here we are. Okay, so this configuration here uh, are some of the options that we can be looking at. Single rail, you got a an AC signal coming in with uh, some sort of uh, DC blocking capacitor. Um, so that could work. We could use this. That looks fairly straightforward. In this case, uh, option B. So hmm, looks like there are some different uh, options. Over here it says figure 9 shows the three uh, topologies. First one, this one, coupling capacitor. Um, this will remove DC, that sounds like what we want, it will therefore not be part of the result. Again, this connection will work well with dual supply configurations. That, that is not what we want. Uh, okay, but in single supply configuration, it will be necessary to raise the voltage, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, if there is already a suitable voltage reference, if not, a mid-supply voltage can be created like so in figure 9b so actually it looks like this one uh, this particular configuration is the one we need so we will have to put up which is actually quite easy to, to set up a, a voltage divider all right 200k I, we can do that so that will be let's also take a look at the application note because they they have some really nice application notes um and let's have a look just to confirm so this is a this is single rail configuration all right so that might be the sort of thing we're looking at uh, let 
let's have a look yeah something like this actually this is very close to what we want but this is a this is a split uh, this is a dual supply a plus and minus we don't want that we're looking for something with a sort of single rail application right maybe something along these lines here so you might have something coming in like so and then you have a voltage reference here okay so basically all said and done what we really need is, is this guy here this middle one so that's what we're going to connect up and uh, let's hope that gets us to where we want to be okay folks i've uh, now uh, breadboarded the uh, circuit we were talking about before uh, and this mess here is basically following that figure 9b but i've also run into problems see what happens since i'm feeding in the uh, a6 signal and I'll just make get this out of the way I'm feeding in the AC signal through um, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor into the circuit uh, wide as a, I got split um, 100k 100k to give me a middle voltage divider that goes into the uh, secondary input the trouble with this is when I when I power this up this is oh, actually it's powered up already uh, you will see that that blue line which is the output uh, it's, it's just high shouldn't be high you think that it'd be low let me get this All right no that's wrong let me turn this up see as i increase this you can see that that just stays up there that's not right so i decided to revert the circuitry to um to revert the circuitry to 9c which seems to work quite a bit better and while i was doing this i also found out that uh, this uh, particular converter accepts an input of uh, no more than one volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak differential okay so now in this case here let me see if I've got it right it looks right I've got an input that's going there um, I'm grounding this yep that looks about right okay so now uh, if you look at the scope I'm going to turn this down and you can see that yeah this sort of works let me just improve the uh, scale okay see so now you can see how as the AC uh, input increases the uh, output tracks it okay it tracks it quite well let me see increase the amplitude and of course uh, it should only go to about one volt apparently which means now I have to scale everything to about one volt right so we get to about one volt now what happens if we start going over one volt you see that uh, this this blue line no longer traces it right so you're gonna have a problem there so we have to keep that input below about let's see about here okay if we keep it below about I guess about 1.2 volts uh, we are good to go now doing so presents its own problems because um, you can see that we have quite a bit of noise and if I change the acquisition and, and just increase this to say about um, let's make it 10,000 okay you can see we have quite a bit of spikes right there and i'm not sure how that's going to be uh, it's going to be quite a significant amount of noise you know in our signal so i will have to actually think about some way you know in in all likelihood i'm probably going to redesign this whole thing maybe change the adc um and uh, use a qu more, more quiet ADC because the, the current ADC really makes a lot of noise and if I can really bump this up you can actually see just the amount of noise I just freeze it you can just look at the amount of noise inside and that that amount of noise is quite significant uh, given well it's quite significant given the um, the low voltage dynamic range we have now if it's just one volt Okay, all these spikes that's that's about 52 millivolts out of a volt maximum so that's quite a bit of it so i would like to maybe rethink this and uh redo this whole circuitry so that we wouldn't have to uh, uh we will not have to deal with some of these problems because you know keep working around these problems adding capacitors it's not probably the way to go i'm going to probably rip everything off this board i redo it uh, with a different ADC uh, and 
I can't do a whole lot now because I don't have this uh, T TSSOP or the MSOP adapter. But I'm going to have to order some of that. And when that comes, we're going to do a little bit more. So for now, we are pretty much stuck here. It does work uh, as long as you keep the input scale to a 1 volt maximum. And that's really very small. That's plus minus half a volt, right? So, okay. So we're going to come back in another video and uh, hopefully we get this whole thing fixed. Well, until then, gentlemen, have uh, fun with your electronics. I'll see you maybe uh, once uh, parts come in and I get some stuff done here. Bye.